this is such a simple little circuit. I'm rather surprised that I haven't seen it being used in solar applications before. It provides both DC-DC conversion, step-down conversion, as well as a very crude way of maintaining maximum power on the solar panel. And it does that with no more than seven components. I will demonstrate two panels. First, the 5 watt panel left right here in the shade. And then after that, I'll use the 50 watt panel to drill some holes with a cordless drill and see if I can get practical power out of it. Let me first show you what the panel does if I connect it directly to the motor. Notice the voltage drops from 8 volt down to 160 millivolt and nowhere near enough power to get the motor going. If I now disconnect that bypass, I can even load the motor. You can hear that high pitch whine. That is the switching frequency. I'll change some of the component values which will emphasize that pulsing nature of the circuit. I've replaced the capacitor with a very chunky electrolytic capacitor and I replaced the feedback resistor with a slightly lower value. The effect of that will become clear when I explain the schematic. Let me just show you what happens. The circuit essentially switches the load on and off. During the off cycle, the capacitor charges up and maintains a very constant voltage on the panel very close to its maximum power point. Okay, now for the 50 watt panel. This is the circuit modified. I've added the inductor and a xenodiode to boost efficiency and help cope with the higher voltage. I'll be using an old cordless drill with a 6 mil bit and I'll be drilling into a piece of pine brandering. Input parameters displayed over here. In that is current out and voltage out. I will once again first demonstrate with the solar panel connected directly. Okay, now to demonstrate the circuit, I've adjusted the circuit to give at least 13 volts on the panel and it won't allow the panel to drop below that. If the load does increase and draws more current, it will drop the output voltage and start bucking the current. See, I'm still loading it very lightly. Now I'm going to apply pressure. Note the current. I'll develop the schematic for the circuit step by step to also explain how it works. So starting off with the direct connection between panel and motor. Switch open and you've got open circuit voltage over here. And when you close the switch, assuming there is not enough current available from the panel and it drops to short circuit current and pretty much zero voltage. Maximum power on the panel would be somewhere over there. The first two components to add to the circuit is an input capacitor as well as a diode across the motor. Now the panel first charges up the capacitor so if I then close the switch the current from both panel and capacitor will discharge simultaneously and if I have to open up the switch again, the inductive current generated by the motor has a closed loop in which to continue with. When the switch is open, the solar panel doesn't sit idle because it can also, in that time, recharge the capacitor. 
to electronically switch the circuit on and off um, actually using a P-channel MOSFET. In order for the switch to be able to close I need a resistor added to the gate which will pull it high when the gate is not grounded and in order to switch the MOSFET on I'm using an N-channel transistor to pull that gate to ground. The circuit as it is here is a very basic form of pulse width modulated power supply. Normally you would have a microcontroller that adds a square wave signal to the base of the transistor and depending on the duty cycle that would open and close the switch for a certain period. What I need the circuit to do is switch on at a certain minimum voltage and then remain on as the power drops and then switch off the circuit at some lower voltage and then allow the capacitor to recharge back to this higher voltage. So I want something that will oscillate between two preset voltages and if those voltages are very close to max power point then I can get an average power very close to maximum power. To switch on the transistor I'm going to use a variable resistor placed across the base of the transistor and using the sweeper on the trim pot feeding the base. The transistor requires at least 0.6 volts across the base and emitter before it starts conducting. So if I adjust the ratio on this voltage divider let's say 0.6 and 7.4 that means the minute this top rail goes above 8 volts the transistor will conduct it will pull the gate of the MOSFET to ground and my circuit will be switched on. That 8 volt would be this point over here let's call that V on. I also need a bit of hysteresis built into the circuit so that it doesn't immediately switch off once the voltage drops below 8 volts. I do that by adding another resistor from this side of the circuit and then tying that in to the base of the transistor. So what happens is that when the MOSFET is switched on this resistor is essentially in parallel with the top resistance on the voltage divider which then lowers the effective resistance and changes the ratio between the lower part and the upper part of this voltage divider. So effectively you change the voltage at which this point drops below 0.6 volts. You don't want the voltage to drop too far on this curve. You want it to oscillate very close on either side of the maximum power point. So a high value resistor there will give you a small drop in voltage and that will be the voltage at which the circuit switches off again. Now the fact that you've got automatic oscillation, any form of oscillation is the very basis of power electronics. You can employ additional components making use of that oscillating nature to improve efficiency. One of those would be an inductor placed on the output side and that means when the switch is off that inductor will continue driving the current and you'll get continuous current through the motor, higher current, lower voltage with effective bucking, in other words very effective DC to DC conversion, high voltage low current and low voltage high current. The frequency at which this switch will switch on and off and at which the panel will oscillate depends on the difference between these two voltage points. The further they are apart the longer it will take before the circuit reaches either point of switching on or switching off. The other thing that would reduce the frequency is the size of the capacitor. The larger the capacitor the longer it will take to discharge and recharge between each switching operation.
The on voltage is adjusted by adjusting the ratio on this uh, trim pot and the off value then depends on this feedback resistor and how it ties in with the voltage divider. The MOSFET that I'm using is limited to a difference of 20 volts between the gate and the source pin. And if I want to use my 50 watt panel, unfortunately that has an open circuit voltage of 21 volts. So I need to add one more component just to make sure that the gate doesn't drop further than a certain minimum value. And I do that by adding a Zener diode across the gate and the source. In my case I'm using three 5 volt Zeners so my gate will never go more than 15 volts lower than the top rail. These are the component values then. The only component that I don't have the value for is the inductor. I scavenged that from an old buck converter. Now just the reasoning behind developing this circuit I wanted to find a cost-effective solution to use with small solar panels. My cheapest maximum power point tracker costs as much as that 50 watt panel and yet it can only handle 5 amps. In other words, it can only handle as much as that panel can put out and still perform any form of DC-DC conversion. So I have to do the cost evaluation between buying an MPPT versus buying an additional panel. So for any smaller panel you're going to struggle finding something that will give you better performance than this simple circuit. You do get small buck converters, low power and cheap, but none of those would give you the ability to track maximum power under variable conditions.